So in this question, we have an upper arm that is subjected to three different forces. And in the first part of the question, we need to find the magnitude of the tension force F sub T in the deltoid muscle. Now we can assume that this arm is in equilibrium. So what that means is that the sum of the torques that are acting on the arm will equal zero. And that's actually the first part of analyzing this question is to apply the sum of the torques is equal to zero. Now, before you can apply that principle, you have to select a pivot point. You could theoretically put your pivot anywhere along the diagram. It is usually useful to place the pivot where there is an unknown force passing. We have two unknown forces, F sub T and F sub S, but because our first goal is to find F sub T, what we will do is place the pivot where F sub S is passing. Now there's a good reason, and you'll see why in just a moment, why we place the pivot at that place. Now that we have placed the pivot in a correct location, the next thing to do is to apply this principle right here. It is useful to remember that the torque produced by a force is equal to the force multiplied by the sine of a particular angle, which we will discuss, and then multiplied by the distance from that force to the pivot. For example, if we were to apply the expression for the torque supplied by this force right here, we would have the torque supplied by F sub T equals F sub T multiplied by the sine of an angle. Now, in this picture, we have labeled the angle between FT and the arm as 12 degrees. If you go back up to the original picture, they actually didn't label that angle directly. They labeled the one sort of above it as 12 degrees. But we probably remember from geometry that when you have two lines, such as this line and that line, that are parallel, and then a third line joins them together, then the alternate interior angles are equal to one another. So the alternate interior angles would be this angle here and that angle there. Those will both be equal. Therefore, we know that the angle between FT and the arm is indeed 12 degrees. So back to the torque analysis, that would be the angle that we would insert into the equation for the torque produced by the FT force. And then we multiply by the distance from that force to the pivot. And we can see from the diagram that that distance is 0.08 meters. So that would be how you would calculate the torque by that particular force. If we look at the gravitational force, which we've labeled as FG, we could also write down the torque expression for that force. We would have the torque supplied by FG equals the gravitational force, which was stated in the question to be 38.8 newtons times the sine of the angle between the gravitational force and the arm. That angle is actually just 90 degrees because gravity points straight down and the arm is being held perfectly horizontal. Therefore, they're perpendicular. Therefore, the angle is indeed 90 degrees. And then we multiply that by the distance from the gravitational force to the pivot. That was given in the problem as 0.29 meters. Now, as for FS, remember we placed the pivot at FS. So in other words, FS was passing through the pivot. So if you did the torque for FS, you would have the FS force multiplied by the sine of some unknown angle. But look at the distance from FS to the pivot. The distance is actually zero because the FS force is passing right through the pivot. So that would be zero. So in fact, the torque produced by FS is actually zero. So we don't even have to regard it. The only other thing we want to mention about the two torques is the fact that one of them is going to be positive and the other is going to be negative. You probably have learned that if you have an extended object and there's a torque that's causing it to rotate clockwise, that that is actually considered to be negative torque. And on the other hand, if you have a force that's causing a counterclockwise torque, that would be positive torque. So look at the gravitational force. Notice it's pulling down on the arm. That would tend to cause the arm to rotate in a clockwise fashion, and therefore the gravitational torque is actually negative. So be careful there. And then for the FT force, it's pulling kind of up and to the left. That would tend to cause a counterclockwise rotation, so that is actually positive torque. Okay, so now that we have all the torques out of the way, we can finally apply the sum of the torques is equal to zero. We'll take the torque produced by FT, add that to the torque produced by gravity, 
and set that equal to zero. We've already discussed those torques, so we could rewrite this equation as Ft sine of 12 degrees times 0 0.08, and then notice because gravitational torque was negative, you'll have minus 38.8 newtons times the sine of 90. In fact, the sine of 90 is just one, isn't it? So we don't even really need to put that in there. We can save ourselves some space. Just multiply that by 0.29 meters, set that equal to zero. So perhaps what you can do next is, in your calculator, type in sine of 12 times 0 0.08. Just make sure your calculator is in degree mode. So you'll have FT times 0 0.0166 minus, and then you could do 38.8 times 0.29. And when you do that, you're gonna get 11.252. That's in newtons equals zero. Actually, that's in newton meters technically, and this is in meters. The units get a little dicey here, but just keep in mind you're solving for force. Go ahead and add the 11.2.52 and then divide by 0 0.0166. And when you do that little simple algebra, you end up with Ft equaling 676 approximately newtons. So that would be the correct answer for the Ft force. We are good there. Next, we have to go back and find what the value of Fs is. So why don't we just clear out a little bit of space here. Recall that the arm is in equilibrium. So not only is the sum of the torques equal to zero, but the sum of the forces is also equal to zero. So what we can do is compute the sum of the forces in the x direction and set that equal to zero and then also set the sum of the forces in the y direction equal to zero. But before we do that, why don't we just go in here and recall that Ft, which we just calculated, is 676 newtons. Okay, so now we'll go to the sum of the forces in the x direction. We can also kind of clear out some space in here. The question marked this angle right here as theta. We don't know that theta. So for the x component of Fs, we could draw that in. It's going to be pointing to the right, and then the y component is pointing to the left. Notice that the x component is adjacent to the angle, and since it's adjacent, you would use the cosine to express that. So in other words, the x component of Fs will be Fs times the cosine of that angle. Furthermore, notice it points to the right, so it will indeed be positive. And then we have another force acting in the x direction. Go back and look at Ft. And if you drew the components, you would have a component of Ft pointing to the left and then a component pointing up. The component that's pointing to the left is the x component of Ft. Notice that that is also adjacent to the 12 degree angle, but notice it's pointing to the left, so it's going to be negative. So what you'll say is minus Ft cosine of the 12 degree angle. And those are the only two forces acting in the x direction, so you can go ahead and set this equal to zero. Now we know Ft, we just figured that out, so we might as well plug that in. That was the 676, then cosine 12 equals zero. Let's add the 676 cosine 12 to the other side. So you'll have Fs cosine theta equals, and then let's do it on our calculator. 676 times the cosine of 12 degrees is about 662 approximately. Now we can't solve for Fs yet because we have two unknowns. We have the theta and the Fs itself. So let's go over to the y direction next. And we can see that we have lots of forces in the y direction. The easiest one is the gravitational force. It's negative 38.8 newtons, negative because it's pointing down. We look at the y component of Fs right there. Notice it's opposite to the angle. So you'll use the sine to express that. Notice it's also pointing down. So putting that all together, you'll have minus Fs times the sine of that unknown angle. And then you have the y component of Ft, which points straight up. That is also opposite to the 12 degree angle. So you will use the sine to express it. It's pointing upward. So you'll have plus Ft sine of 12 and then set that equal to zero. Now, it's going to be strategic, of course, to plug in the value for Ft. So let's rewrite this again. We'll have negative 38.8 minus Fs sine of theta plus the 676 sine of 12 equals zero. 
Go ahead and add the, th actually, in fact, let's add FS sine theta to the other side. So you'll have negative 38.8 plus 676 sine of 12 equals FS sine theta. FS times sine theta. Pick up your calculator, do negative 38.8 plus the 676 sine of 12, and you're going to get 101.8. 101.8 equals fs sine theta. Now, again, we're still in a bit of a pickle here because we have too many unknowns. So what we'll do is a little bit of algebraic maneuvering. Why don't we take fs times the sine of theta equals 101.8, and then right underneath that, we'll write this equation. We'll have fs cosine theta equals 662. Now, a neat thing happens when you divide these two equations. Fs divided by Fs is just one, so those cancel. Sine theta divided by cos theta is actually tangent of theta. And then you could do the 101.8 divided by the 662, which gives you about 0.15-ish. Then you can find the angle. You can take the inverse tangent of both sides. And by doing that, you will get the angle, which is about 8.75 degrees. Once you have the angle, you can actually go back and use either this equation or this equation to find Fs. Let's just use this equation. We would have Fs times the cosine of the 8.75 degree angle equals 662. And then finally, just divide both sides of this equation by the cosine of the 8.75 degree angle. And you're going to find that Fs is approximately 669 newtons. So that would be the correct answer to the second part of the question.